Man, hey man, it's settled. Is it settled? Is it settled? Mm. There's some things that has to be settled in your life. There's some things that have to be settled in your life. And I settled some things a long time ago. You've been following my story. If you heard my story, I settled some things in 1995. My aunt, Pam, right when I was getting ready to go back out in the world and go back out in the street and sell drugs, not sell drugs, but give guys money to flip drugs for me. You know, I was still, I was saved, but I was, you know, I was hanging out with these drug dealers every single day. And so, you know, I hadn't heard the message yet on evil communication and all that company, corrupt good man. I just hadn't got there yet. I'm still babe in my walk, and, uh, and I'm going with them every single day. And I ain't doing nothing. I ain't selling nothing. I ain't doing it. I'm just hanging out with them. And the more I hung out with them, the more I wanted to be there. See, you don't understand the power of association. You think who you're hanging out with is not going to influence you, but I beg to differ. They're going to influence you more than you would ever think. Let me see your closest friends, and I can tell you what your future is going to be. Let me see the people that you listen to, and I can tell you what you're going to be a product of. It's simple as that. It's not hard. Change your associations, change your life. Yeah, so I decided to go get on drugs. I mean, go to, to, to use, let these guys sell some drugs for me. And right when I was thinking it, they didn't know it. I was just in the car with them. They was dropping me back off. I'm going to use this at my relative's house, if you're keeping up with my story. I, I was at my relative's house, and they dropped me off at my relative's house. And I come in the house, and the door is already open, and they have uh, Kirk Franklin uh, all in the family. I don't know it's all in the family. Kirk Franklin and the family. And uh, Helen Baylor, VCR tapes, VHS tapes. And I'm sitting there. I didn't go upstairs. I just sat there in the living room, and everybody was watching. I'm sitting there, and I'm watching him, and I'm watching this young man. I'm like, and in my heart of hearts, I made a decision. That was my reality check, you know, for my son, reality check. I made a decision that day after I've already made a decision to serve the Lord. Because, see, you, everybody can want to be saved. But are you going to make a decision to serve him and live for him? That's another thing. Save me, but don't be my Lord. Because if you're my Lord, that means you, get, you have the right to tell me what to do and what not to do. So that day, the reality check hit me. And I said to, in my heart, you know what, God? I don't care what's going on. I'm going to never leave you. I am with you. I want whatever you got for me. And the next day. Brothers knocked on the door like clockwork. Yo, what's up, P? They called me Palm back then. What's up, man? What's up? What's up? <clears throat> I said, bro, I can't ride with y'all no more. Huh? No, nah, no, nah, I can't ride, man. Um, I got to stay on this path. God got something for me. I need to, I need to follow it up. Man, you sure, man? Yeah, I'm popping. Thank you. Never hung out with them again from that day. Use that time instead. Go upstairs in my room. Got in the word in the Holy Ghost even more, began to fill my time with the presence of God. I didn't know I was going to get married and know I didn't know how hard marriage was and all that, Lord Jesus. I didn't know I had a wife and, three, and two more kids coming. <laughs> you don't know what God got for you. You don't know what's up the road. You don't know what's two months, three months from now. You're not preparing? You think that the messages that taught from this place where you believe God sent you? You don't think God talking to you? You don't think this for you? Oh, that's so and so was here. No, you here. The message for you. Stop trying to think about who else should hear it. No, you should hear it. Start with yourself. Why? Because you're here. That means it's for you. Man, I wish, brother, no, 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 no. God saying, no, I wish you would listen and stop thinking about who should be here. And so you can change and transform so you can grab hold to this thing so you can be what I've called you to be. This is what happens when we come into the kingdom and we submit and surrender our lives to the kingdom. If you read my story the other day, I'm sharing in that story. If you look at my journey after Christ, everybody go through the same thing before Christ. We sinners. Guess what all of us doing? A bunch of sinning in a whole lot of different ways. So it, it don't matter what your story was before you got saved. What is your story once you name the name of the Lord? What's your story once you came into the kingdom? 
It's still not a perfect story. You read my story and see all, I went through some stuff. My wife and I struggled through some things. But we stayed on the path. And that's why I can say today, after being with the Lord 25 years, this race is amazing. Ooh, this is an amazing race. It's so amazing. It is so amazing. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Okay. Oh, man. I thought I died then just now, but I, I, maybe I didn't. That was a little residue left. <clears throat> okay. My objective. Y'all ready? My objective doing this series is to encourage every believer that you can win this race and be victorious in every situation, regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what it looks like, regardless of what's happening in your life. God has set you apart on today, in this time, in this season, amen, to bring hope to the world. You are the hope of the world. You're the hope of the world. You are. It's not nobody else. You are the hope of the world. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, you are the hope of the world. You are. So the real question is this. Can God trust you? Can he trust you? Or can you trust the God who knows your future to lead you or push you or, or get you to a path that will eventually bring you to your destiny? You and I, we have to, the real question is, can we trust the God who says he loves us? To get us to a place, amen, of fulfillment for our lives. Can, can he do what he says he's going to do? Is, is he a God of integrity? Do he really mean what he says when he says certain things in, his, in the Bible? Do, do, can, you, can I really take that to heart that he's talking to me when he says X, Y, and Z? Is he, is he really talking to me? Does he really mean what he says when he says these things to me? Or when I write the vision, when I make it plain, when I do all these gymnastics, I'm doing all these confessions, I'm doing all this prayer. I'm doing all, is he a God of integrity? Can he really back up what he's saying? And that's where we have to get to a place where we believe God and we trust him regardless. Do you know God did not bring you this far to, to people say to leave you, but to just let you perish because of a virus or because of something else? He didn't bring you this far for that. I don't know what he, what, what's happening in other people's lives. You can't be concerned about that. Your race is your race. You got to know where you are in God and what God is doing in your life. I knew a young lady once upon a time, her and her husband, who she did not take any pills or anything. She had such a relationship with God, such a close relationship with God, that she, that, that she said God would give me the children that he wants me to have. And guess what? He gave her one in addition to the one she already had. And he, he didn't give it anymore. She didn't do anything. She didn't, she didn't tie herself up. She didn't, he didn't do anything. No. That's where she was in her heart. That was, that was her relationship with God. She said, and I was like, I was young at the time. I was like, what? She's like, yeah. She said, God knows me. He know, God knows. I'm not doing nothing. I'm trusting my God. Wow. Ooh, what man or woman is this? Man, where, where you come from? That's why you can look through the Bible and see God use several men and women. He used different people. All these people in the world. Why he picked this person? Why he picked Ruth? Why he picked Esther? Why he picked Daniel? Why he picked, you know, all these other people. Why he picked them? It was their faith. It was their trust. It was their belief. Why he picked the little 16-year-old girl, Murray? What? You thought she could handle a child? I mean, you thought she could raise? I mean, what? He must did. She said, well, be it unto me as you, as you say. Something was on her. Something was on them that wasn't on other people. Yeah, they might have been believers, but he said, I ain't find nobody had such faith as my boy Noah. Guess what? End up, he was the only one that had faith because nobody else got on the boat with him. He, he ran across different people. I have not seen such great faith, not even in Israel, not even in my own people. Because there's different levels of faith. We're going to teach on faith this year. We're going to teach you on faith. There are different levels of faith, and each of us own different levels in our walk with God. Not only are we on a race and no, there's no competitors, but we own different levels in our walk with God. Everybody is not where everybody else is, but at the same time, guess what? You can grow. 
Don't use it as an excuse to stay the same and say five years you're doing the same thing. No, no, it's time to deal with that. Look, I need some prayer. I need somebody to lay hands on me. Look, I've tried to do it on my own, like the one with issue blood. I went through this for 12 years. I went through this all these many years. I spent all my money. I had all the doctors. Guess what? I need to get to Jesus now. I need to get some help. I've tried to do it on my own. I did. I've literally tried to do it. Saints, sisters, brothers, I need your help. Some stuff, it takes other people to help you. Let's look at Matthew. Let's get going. Let's get going. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. This has been our... It's kind of been our foundation scripture. I guess I could use this that now since I'm, I'm, I'm using it again. My whole, my whole goal and point is this. Whose life has the potential to be ruined if you are impatient with the growth that God has for you? Whose life has the potential, before I read Matthew 7, 13, whose life has the potential to be ruined because you refuse to grow you're supposed to grow in, somebody down the road who God have you getting ready to connect to, their life has the potential to be ruined if you're not where you're supposed to be by the time you reach that person. I talked to my pastor yesterday and <sighs> said he'd been called in the ministry for 23 years. I was like, wow. I said, 23 years, I said, Dad, you're called. I said, Dad, you're called into ministry. You're called in, you're called. You know why, you know why God called you? Because he connected us to you. We didn't even know you. I know you called. He connected us. We would have never met you. I don't, I, I don't know where else I'd be right now. Thank God for my pastor. I don't know, I'm telling you. Because <laughs> I understand that every time he opened his mouth, he talking to me. Every time she opened her mouth, she talking to me. Every time they open their mouth, they talking to me. I ain't think, oh, they, that's part of one of my other spiritual brothers. No, that's for me. And I hunger to go get the messages. I hunger for the word. I had their message before they was getting CDs. Before they, they stopped doing CDs, had a message sent to my wife and I. After the mess, First they were sent weekly and it was too taxing. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, then send me the series. <laughs> they would send us a series after every month. Every month. And now I get out there, and every time they're on, I got to be on. I got to find, like today, I, I go and hear the word that he spoke. Like I need to hear what my pastor said today. I shared this on the men's call. I ain't read that scripture. I'm going to read it, y'all. I, I got my time, too. I'm, I'm going to honor my time. Praise God as much as I can today. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I got my wife there, too, my other timekeeper. Amen. Believe me, when she look at me with those eyes, boy, I'm talking about beautiful eyes. She don't look, oh, no, these are pretty eyes right here. These are lovely eyes. These is the eyes of the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Okay. It's, the Lord part was a joke, don't. Y'all all right? <clears throat> what was I telling y'all, though? Yeah, listen to my pastor. Amen. Amen. Listen to the pastor. That's why, you know, listen to my pastor and, and going back and get the messages and listen to him over and over again. So I shared this on a call. I shared this on a call. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's why you got to have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> what you going to do without him bringing everything back to your mouth? Okay, good. Thank you. I better say it for I get real. <laughs> so I was on a call this past Wednesday. As Wednesday, and, um, and, and so I shared with the men on a call after uh, uh, Deacon Antoine shared a great job with his message being comfortable, excellent message. So I share with, uh, I share with them, like, you know, how, how can we just eat on Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday? And some of us not eating on Wednesdays. And that's spiritually. But in the natural, we eat three meals a day and two snacks. At Feed More, we call that two meals because every snack is even a meal. So we eat five meals a day. Seven days a week, but the spiritual intake is only Sunday, one if you're here, and don't go back and listen to it again, or if you watch online, and you don't go back and listen to it again on podcast or YouTube, you just ate one meal for that day, and then you're waiting for Wednesday, 
And then on Wednesday, you ironing clothes, and you, you got the TV up, you're cooking, and you don't understand. So you're getting a half a message on, on Wednesday. So you're getting a half a meal on Wednesday, and then you're waiting to come back on Sunday again. How are you going to be a spiritual giant eating like that? You eat seven days a week in the natural, but only two days or one and a half days in the spirit. But you expect to be kingdom-minded, walk in flow with the Lord, be on point when you need to, say what needs to be said out your mouth when you need to say it, and you don't know why you're struggling. But hopefully you heard me. Everybody has an ear, hear what the Spirit is saying. I wonder why the Lord said that. Everybody heard what he said, but everybody didn't hear what he said. So to those that have ears, let them hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen? Matthew 7, I got the road now. Matthew 7, 13, 14, you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide for many who choose that way. It's open for many who choose that way. But the gateway to life, to life, the gateway to life, the path to life is very narrow. It's very narrow, and the road is difficult. And only a few find it. Now, the Bible has prophesied already to us that only a few people are going to find it. And we can try to save the world, and we should try to save the entire world, but we know based on the scripture already that there's only going to be a few people that find the path. So our job and our assignment is to make sure we capture the few. Let's catch the few. Listen, you are the few. I'm the few. Say I'm the few. Yeah, you're the few. I'm the few because we're the few. We're in here right now. You know, God have, have captured us. He's got our attention. And so we're here because we want some things from God. Many pass along the wrong way because the right way requires so much determination. And afterwards, and I shared this on last week, so much self-denial. So much self-denial on this path. I thought I wanted to do this or maybe I wanted to do that, but then now I'm doing this. It's interesting. When my pastor called me, when I talked to him on yesterday and pastor, and he said, uh, hey, listen, we got, a, we got a call coming up, right? I said, yeah. He said, it's going to be, be on this day. Nope, change that day. Put it on this day at this time. Well, well he, he didn't look at my calendar to see what was on my calendar. No, he didn't. He didn't even consider my calendar. But guess what? I'm going to do everything in my power. Everything in my, I'm going to be on that call. All right, I'm, I'm going to be on the call. No question I'm going to be on the call. No question. Where you go, I go. Wherever you have the sons and daughters meeting, that's where I'll be. You're going to have it in Alaska, we'll be there. You're going to have it in Germany, we'll be there. Wherever you go and wherever the meeting going to be, we're going to be there. Your children, your kids, we're going to be there. You know why? I've learned some things in my life. I learned how to be a follower. That's why I'm a leader today. Listen, who still follows? You don't graduate that you don't have to follow no more. None of us arrives. Still following. But you can't be a leader until you learn how to follow. Because then you'll understand how the follower feels. If you ain't a real follower, you don't get it. You don't get it. And that's why your leadership has to grow. The testimony, <laughs> okay, all right, praise God. The testimony of believers is that we always win, saints. And just because we win doesn't mean everything is going to be easy. It doesn't mean that. Proverbs chapter uh, 4, thank, okay, good, thank you. Proverbs chapter 4, Proverbs chapter 4, let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. Proverbs chapter 4, verses uh, 25 through 27. This is the Passion Translation for those that are watching online. This is the Passion Translation. Oh, I think they straight online. Amen. So it says, set your gaze on the path before you. Set your gaze on the path before you with fixed purpose, looking straight ahead. Ignore life's distractions. Set your gaze on the path before you. Stop looking behind you. Set your gaze on the path before you. What are we going to do currently and for the future? Yes, we got a past, but what's next? What's up ahead? What's up the road? Set your gaze on it. Look ahead and don't allow yourself to be distracted. Ignore life's distraction because life's going to throw a lot of distractions at you. 
I ain't got time to talk about all distraction we went through, Lord Jesus, in our life, and still we go through distractions. We see them, but we will not allow uh, them to pull us off of the path. We won't allow them to pull us off of this race. This is a race that God has for us. This is a race that's been designed for us. This is an amazing race, amen, again. But we don't know all that's up ahead, but we're going to stay on the path. We're going to stay on the path. We're going to stay in the word. We're going to stay focused. 26 says, watch where you're going. Stick to the path of truth. Ooh, that's good right there. Stick to the path of truth. Don't just be on the path. Make sure you're listening to the truth. Because you can be on the path and listen to lies. You can be on the path and not really regarding the truth. Stick to the truth. Speak the truth while you're on the path. Stay close to the truth. Stick to the path of truth and the, listen, and the road will be safe and smooth before you. One thing about the truth, you don't got to prop it up. You don't got to put no stand beside it to hold it up or anything. The truth stands alone all by itself. 27 says, don't allow yourself to be sidetracked for even a moment or take the detour that leads to darkness. Wow. Don't allow yourself to be sidetracked even for a moment, for even a moment. Listen, saints, don't take yourself off the path of following God, not even for a moment. Not, don't put the Bible down and say, well, I'm going to go deal with this. Well, I'm going to put my faith down. This, hold on. <laughs> Y'all know how girls, I would say girls, but, you know, some guys do this stuff too. What you doing? You're setting your faith down to the side until you, so you can deal with something. Then pick your, pick your faith back up. Pick the truth back up. Pick the word back up. You're going to set down your faith. You're going to set down the Lord. Go, go deal with some. Then put everything back on like, hey, oh, we good now. <laughs> yeah. Don't take yourself off the path of following God, not even for a moment. There's nothing worse than, listen, taking yourself off the path. God is not taking you off. Listen, the devil doesn't even have the power to take you off. That's why I say take yourself off. It's you. It's you getting yourself off the path. You walked off the path. Walk back on it. Get back on the path. Get back in the race. Get back on point. You walked off, you can walk back on. Why do people think you can't walk back on, but you walked off? You know, people used to say this, uh, you know, when I used to tell people, my wife tell people that, you know, listen, you need to start saying you're delivered from drugs. These people that we, that's been in our past and we help get free and all that, and they'll go other places. They'll be like, no, we can't say that. They tell us don't say that. I say, well, well let me ask you a question. Whose choice is that you get high now? I'll wait. This, this. Didn't you decide you're not getting high? Yeah, right. So why you can't say that? No, people scared to say it. Because what? So that means you got a reserve? You plan on doing something else? Then say it. Deal with it. Say it out your mouth. It's power in your tongue. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. So everybody came through our group. We're like, no, you, gonna, you need to say this. And many of them today still walking free. Still walking free. Saved, delivered in different ministries, doing good, calling us, texting us from time to time. Amen. Thanking us. Thanking us. Whose choice is it that I stay on this path? It's my choice. I walked off, I can walk back on. That's simple. I walked off, I can walk back on. It's nothing worse than taking yourself off the path of following God. I shared this with you on last week that, you know, that the book of Numbers is about a nation who was on their path. They was on their path or they was on a race to the promised land which had already been set aside with God. I mean, if I read the story with Caleb, and I ain't got time to do all that, but they, they talked about how they went into the land when the ten spies brought back the evil report. They had went and grabbed the fruit. They said the grapes were so big. Man, I wish I could see. Why, why would this? Man, I, I just see myself, you know, the cartoons, they just eat the whole grape up. Blah, 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 blah. They're like big grapes, and they just, they just eat the whole grape, and they walk on the side of you. Yeah, that's how, when, I, when they said, I see this big grape. They said the grapes are so big, the fruit is so beautiful. Everything that the Lord said is true. Well, then that was what the two people said. What the other ten people, what they see? 
All they saw was the distractions. All they saw was the giants. All they saw was the issues and the things that they were going through and faced with. That's why I say ignore life's distraction. And because they were distracted, guess what they try to do? Distract others. You know, people are not going to be distracted by themselves. Oh, I ain't going oh, to be over here by myself distracted. No, I need to let you be distracted too. Don't nobody want to be distracted alone. I don't want to be alone. I ain't let y'all know where that comes from or who it is. You have no clue, I promise you. But no, you know, I'm not going to be distracted. And I'm not, you know, and people don't want to be alone and distracted. So I'm going to distract you and you and you and you and you. Let's all just be distracted together. So this nation who already had a promise from God, he set, the, he set it all up for them. It was all beautiful. Everything was set. Even though along the way, victory was imminent. They had to go through some battles and all that, but we read the Bible. They didn't lose to anybody except when they started, you know, being in rebellion and all that kind of stuff. God had to keep bringing in deliverers and all that. But, but outside of that, the promise was still there, and everything that God said, it was right there. But nothing is worse than taking yourself off the path of following God. Share with you on last week, in their case, 40 years were added to their journey. It should have taken them 11 days to get there. But instead, it took them 40 years. My question is, do you have 40 years to spare? Do you have any years to just throw away and, and, and just doing whatever you want to do instead of doing the path and the plan that God got for you that's going to get you to your destiny quicker. Do you have all this time to just waste as if you got a whole lot of time to be here on this side of heaven? You, we don't have that kind of time. I don't have 40 years to spare to give just to, just to waste my life with. I wasted 25 of them. Not all of them. I was a baby in some of those years. Remember, I had to be a baby, then I walked, and then I, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, really, to be honest with you, probably won't until I got like maybe around 12 or something. You know, my mom back there, I'm pretty sure she started knowing. She said, I've been, I, you know, I misbehaved. You know, I, I was mischievous. I won't bad. And so at some point, I became mischievous, and I began to do certain things that, that you know, because it was just me. It was just something I was doing. I was just, I don't know why. But all I'm saying is, but then from that point, for me, from, I can say from 16, bringing a gun to school, being put out of school, to 25 when my life changed, you understand? I, I have learned my lesson. I was incarcerated for about 11 months total, eight months at one time. But that's all the time you've been in jail? Yep, and proud of it. So <laughs> how many more years you think I should stay there to learn the lesson, you know, because I've been in the pen 20 years. I've been locked up 15 years. I've been down 10. Oh, are you think you sounding smart right now? That what you're telling me? So how long it take you to get your act together? It didn't take me that long. I was behind there a couple of days and like, <laughs> oh, I don't want to, I want to be out of here. I don't want to be in here. I was young. I was crying. And then my girlfriend left me. You know, you know I was hurt. I was crushed. I'm hearing all the love songs in there. All they playing is the night moves, and I'm thinking who she would and all that. And I'm just going through, and she didn't care. She didn't care. You heard me? She didn't care, but she care now. <laughs> yeah, she didn't, but, you know, because I didn't care. That's why she didn't care, but praise the Lord. Let me move on. All right, four ways, y'all, four ways. I got a few more minutes. Four ways, four ways to walk in this amazing race. Four ways to walk in this amazing race. This race is amazing. Please don't take yourself off the path. This race is amazing. Don't take yourself off this path. Don't do it. Not even for a moment. Not even for a minute. Don't do it. Number one. Number one. Four ways to walk in this amazing race. Number one is to walk by faith. Walk by faith. You've heard this before. Walk by faith. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and 17 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 tells us, therefore, if any man be in Christ, any man, if anyone is in Christ, New King James Version, if anyone is in Christ, in Christ, in Christ, he is a what? New creature. Old things have what? 
have passed away. You know, when I read this the other day, something hit me that hadn't hit me before. I was like, and I underlined it, old things have passed away. So as I'm on this race or on this path, and people, you know, and I encounter people on this path, and they say, oh, what happened, to, what happened to that part of your life? Oh, it passed away. You just keep on walking. Oh, what, ha- oh, what happened to that? You know, you used to be a cursor and I used to, you know. Oh, no, it passed away. Oh, man, I used to see you in the clubs and all that. No, nah, it passed away. I had a funeral for it. It died. The old things that were operating in my life before Christ have passed. Look, and I don't even feel sorry for it. There's no remorse at, these, at that funeral. I don't feel sorry for him one bit. But guess what? It passed. Old things have passed. They're gone on. They passed away. People ask, what happened to that? No, I passed away. It's gone. That's the old me. That's the old life. I don't do that stuff no more. Those things have passed. Come on, there has to be a place where you can see where your life was this way and now it's this way. If not, we need to have some more funerals. Just line them up. You want me to be the pastor there? I will speak for you if you need me to be there and speak over the over, <laughs> over your old life. <laughs> Come on, because we need to get rid of this old way of thinking and these old things that are in our life. We need to let them pass. They're trying to hold on for dear life. Why? Because they want to distract your new life. Man, my old life would jack this new life up. Well, if I was a pastor and I was kind of saved, look, a pastor and kind of saved. Oh, Jesus, I'm kind of saved. What? Well, y'all, y'all, no. You don't want the old me in your life at all, I would say. Not at all. You don't want that brother in your life. I promise you, you don't. Number two, walk by faith. Come on, we come on. We got to walk by. F- oh, I'm sorry. Walk by the spirit. Okay, y'all listening. All right. You don't shout me down like that. I mean, okay. All right. Praise the Lord. All right. Great. Number two, walk by the spirit. You can tell when people are taking notes and listening, and others they ain't know what happened. Why are they yelling at him like that? They're like, I mean, well, I'm just sitting here. I see him. I, he's saying something. <laughs> others like. Uh, I can say this number one five times. They're like, yeah. <laughs> pay attention, y'all. Who are my teachers? Who are my teachers? Go to the tech class. Pay attention. <laughs> See, Zoom got us now. That's what it is. We, we Zoomed. Don't be Zoomed while you're in church, okay? <laughs> you're in church now. Don't be Zoomed. All right, all right, okay. Well, look, number two, walking by the Spirit, or walk by the Spirit. Galatians 5, 16, 17 says this. Here's my instruction. Walk in the Spirit and let the Spirit order your life. If you do, you will never give in to your selfish and sinful cravings. Are you hearing me? For everything the flesh desires goes against the spirit. Did it say everything? Everything the flesh desires goes against the, oh, everything the flesh desires goes against the spirit, and everything the spirit desires goes against the flesh. There is a constant battle raging between them that prevents you, listen to this, from doing the good you want to do. It's a battle going down, going on. You want to do right. You want to do good. But it's a battle going on. It's a, it's a war going on. It's, it's a raging war going on. I want to do right. Paul even said, he said, things I want to do, I don't do. The things I don't want to do, those are the things I do. Who can, who can deliver me from this body of death? That's in Romans chapter 7, I believe. I believe who can deliver me from this? He said, I thank God. It's the Lord that's going to deliver you. You have to have a burial for your past. Listen, if you got to bury every issue one time, one, listen, one funeral at a time. You look, you don't need no GoFundMe. 
Look, you going to save on all the funeral expenses. I will have 10 funerals, 20 funerals, however need I need to have, but I will get rid of every single one of the old things. Because you know why? They're going to hinder you. You can't let one live. Look, I said this before. Look, expect, no, this is what I would do with the last one. <laughs> Dang, okay, real quick. This is what I would do with the last one. No, that last thing, one. you know, it's like your last bill when you're out of debt. Like, come on, think about how you're going to celebrate when you pay off that last bill, you debt free. <laughs> Woo, doggy. Oh, Lord. No, that last sin or that last craving or that last desire that's been, that's been stringing you along and hurting you, I would drown him. <laughs> I would put that one underwater. And you have no funeral. I'm just going to hold your head underwater until I see the bubble. When you see the bubble, because you've been trying to kill me. You've been, you've been trying to distract me. You've been hindering my life. You really the cause of all this headache that's been happening. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to strangle. I'm going to put you underwater. I'm going to drown you. Hey, Pastor, you kind of violent, huh? That's what I do with my little stuff. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I ain't playing with these people. I ain't playing with these spirits. They trying to kill me. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy, not play games with me. So I ain't playing games with him. I strangle him, choke him, whatever I need to do in the spirit. But you're going to get off, you're going to get up off me, you'll get up off my family. Headache try to come my door, you're going to get your little self up off her. That's what you're going to do. You're going to do it right now, too. No, I'm a, you're going to get off of her right now. Lay your hands on wife. No, 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 we have their thought. No, you're going to get up off of her. Get your little self up off her. No, don't do that. You better do it while I ain't around. I'm right here. She, no, get up off her now. I ain't going to say it again. If I have to repeat myself, you know it's going to be some problems. You better know when you're in spiritual warfare. Like, Pastor, you crazy. No, I'm smart. And that's why my life is peaceful and loving and blessed and happy. Shoot, I ain't got to care in the world. You know why? Because I cast all my cares on the Lord. You thought I could say because of her. Nah, nah, nah. No, because I cast all my cares on the Lord. Shoot, you don't think that girl be what beautiful she is? That girl's a trip sometimes. But you know what? It's all good, though. It's all good. I love her. I say this girl, that's, that's, your, that's Pastor Tina. But I love her. And she knows it. Man, I ain't going to share all the other stuff. But she, she knows <laughs> Now, where did I, okay, I know I stopped. 17, verse 17, for everything the flesh desires goes against the spirit. Everything the spirit desires goes against the flesh. There is a constant battle raging between, between them that prevents you from doing the good you want to do. Something invisible is trying to hinder your progress in the kingdom of God. Something invisible is trying to hinder your progress in the kingdom of God. If you don't own the Invisible Enemy series and something invisible is trying to hinder you, then I would say you should get it. I would say you should listen to it on podcasts, on YouTube, every day if you have to, until the invisible thing that's trying to destroy you has been exposed and you've been properly dealt with. I'm not moving on. <laughs> I said to somebody, look, I'm not moving on until I see the fruit in that area. What? I'm not moving on acting like it ain't like it like it. No, it's not okay. I'm not moving on until I see fruit in that area. Oh, you're not just gonna hang around me and think you we're gonna be all buddy. No, we're not buddy buddy. No, we're not buddy buddy. I'm looking for fruit in my own life, and you're gonna get out my life because you the reason that I'm not producing the fruit. So I gotta deal with you, but I need to hear something. I need to hear something that will challenge me. I need to listen to the word. Come on. I can't just wait for Sundays and Wednesdays and think I'm okay. Man, I hope y'all getting this stuff. Number three, walk as children. Walk as children. Walk as children. Come on, walk as children. Listen, I'm going to add this. Of the light. Ephesians 5 and 8 says, For you were once, you were once what? Darkness. But now you are light where? In the Lord. Then it says, walk as children of the light. Who are you? I'm a child of the light. What? Yeah. I've been enlightened. I'm walking in the light. I'm a child of the light. I'm not a child of darkness. I would say it'd be a shame to even speak of some of the things that's been done in secret. Whew. But the Lord see it. The Lord see it. 
Lord sees it all. Matthew 5, 16, New King James Version, real quick. Still talking about walking as the children of the light, or walk as children. I want to kind of bring this to you. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father where? In heaven. As your children of the light, make sure you'll continue to walk in the light. You're walking in that light. Number four, then walk as wise. Be wise. Use wisdom. You know, wisdom you can get from other people. Wisdom you can gain from other people. Experience is something you had to go through for yourself. Now, there are some things that you have to experience. And when I say you have to experience, I'm talking about your salvation and getting to know the Lord. But you don't have to be broke and file bankruptcy three times, ten times, lose your car five times for you to learn a lesson. You don't have to go through everything Pastor Tina and I went through, amen, to get ahead in life. Wisdom is you hear us share testimony stories. We talk about budget. We talk about certain things. So guess what? I ain't ever got to go down that road. I ain't going down that road. No, I ain't following that path. But what I do need to experience is the God they serve. I need to have a personal relationship with Jesus. I need to know him for myself. I, can't, I can get wisdom on him, but I need to know him myself. I can hear y'all talking about him and hear people talking about him, but until I get to know him, that's the only thing we really need to experience, and that's the Lord. I don't need to experience anything else. I don't, I don't, need, I don't think there's nothing else that I need to experience that I can't get wisdom from somebody else. Amen? Ephesians 5, again, this walking is wise. Ephesians 5, 15 and 16 says, See then that you walk circumspectly, meaning walk carefully. I mean, be ca- walk accurately. I mean, be precise. Know what you're going after. Circumspectly, praise God. Not as fools, but as what? Wise. 16, redeeming the time. Redeeming the time, capturing that time, redeeming that time because the days are evil. Oh, how the days are evil. Redeem the time by making a decision to live for the Lord. Time is a gift from God. We're not going to waste it. I'm not going to waste 40 years of my life walking around a journey in the same journey. Listen, I'm going to hear some wisdom somewhere. Man, I thank, boo, I thank God for that chaplain. Ooh, and I was being real mean to him. But I thank God that he saw past my meanness and my attitude and my disrespect as a young man, young black man. He was Caucasian. He saw past all my disrespect to still minister to me and lead me to Jesus. Glory to God. Now, that's a believer. That's a believer right there. Uh, if you're going to clap, go on, clap. We ain't got a patty cake. Go ahead. Go ahead, clap, y'all. That's a believer. And that's what God is calling each of us to do. Look past people's issues. Come on. And such were some of you. Because you're changed now, you can look down on folk. Because you're saved now, you think you're better. No, you're not better. No. What you've done was made a decision to serve God, and you made you, guess what? You've paved the way that also other people can, pay, can, can walk down the same path. Many people who are not walking with us think we think that we think we're better than other people, but we don't. We don't think that. You, they think it. <laughs> they think we think that, and so therefore they think we think we're better, but we don't think that. We're just living for the Lord and encouraging them to do the same. Time is a gift from God. Don't waste it. And listen, don't let other people waste it. A few more scriptures and I'm done. And I'm done. Psalms 119, 105 says this. A very familiar scripture. says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, I'm going to have to stop right there. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Yep. Your word is a lamp to my feet. This is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The word of God gives us direction, but it also provides light. The path is dark, so the word provides the light that we need while we're on this path to make things clearer for us to see. We see in the fog when we don't, when we don't walk by the word. 
things are foggy. It's not really clear until we put the word, oh, okay, now I see. Okay, great. All right, I'm going to do this. Yeah, oh, now I know what I need to do. So without the word, we are walking in the dark, even with our eyes wide open. Wide open with glasses on, still walking in the dark. Because you can't walk in the light without the word. The word of God opens your eyes to everything that you need to really see. Amen. This is the last scripture I'm going to share. I'll be done with this. Isaiah chapter 43 and 2. Isaiah 43 and 2. New King James. That was Psalms 119, 105. That was New King James. Uh, it says this. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. What a way to close. When you pass through the waters. Why are you going on this path? When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. Saints, no matter what this life brings you or throws to you in this race, you're going to overcome. You're going to make it. Listen, as long as you stay on the path that God has already preordained for you, Amen. All I'm saying is the straight and narrow path is ordained of God. The wide and broad path, amen, is, gonna, is, is, the, is the, the, the path of destruction, and we don't know what's going to happen on that path. I ain't trying to go down that road. I'm going to stay on this one right here. I'm going to experience some troubles, but at least I'm with the Lord. So it doesn't matter what you're going to go through on this path. That's just know because God is with you, you're going to overcome. And that's why I say this race is amazing. Amen. I'm going to stop right there. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. I picked